Hello gamers, Carl and Double O here. Welcome to another video. Today's video is about Series 4 and Series 5 cards. Um, I've gone through and looked at some of the synergies where I think they slot into the decks that we currently know of and um, what's going to be the, the strongest way to build around them. Obviously these cards are going to be coming out over the next couple of days. Um, and if anyone's lucky enough to pack one early, hopefully better reference this video and figure out where to start and where to get the maximum use out of them. Because some, most of these cards are very, very strong people um they're kind of game changers um especially this she hulk here the first one is she hulk i think she's probably top three top five arguably top three in in the whole in the whole um series four and five um reason being she's a six energy 10 power cost one less for each unspent energy last turn now you can use her in so many different ways you can use her generally in pretty much any type of build where on three you play a one energy card and then on four um, she'll be reduced down to four, and you can play her on four. For ten power, four is obviously unrivaled. Um, also, very very good with sunspot. Great synergy there. Um, Infant or it can be good, but I mean it's more reliant on the location because at six she'll be one, so you need seven energy. There's a few locations that can do it. Electro doesn't really work because obviously you can only play one unit. But the combo that I find to be the, the strongest is uh, definitely in a destroy uh, archetype. Um, the way this works is you play your normal destroy. Nova, Carnage, that kind of stuff, Deathlock, you, you, standard destroy list. Then on five, you play Wave. Okay, so reduces everything to the next turn at four cost. Then you don't play anything else, you just play Wave, which costs three. And then you get free energy. By the time you get a six, Death should be four minus whatever you destroyed, probably one or two, possibly even zero if you're lucky enough. And then She-Hulk is going to be 4 minus 3. She's going to be 1. So She-Hulk's definitely going to be 1. And de de Death is going to be whatever you have um, destroyed. But you should be able to play both of them in one turn. If you're lucky enough, you might be able to play a 2 or a 1 on top if Death is low enough. Um, so Devastating, guaranteed 22 power on turn 6 in the Destroyer. So that's definitely where I would play. I think if you pack this early, uh, it's amazing. You you'd see instant results with this. Instant results. Um, so that's, that's She-Hulk. Uh, next card is Titania. Titania is a 1 energy 5 power. When any card is played at its location, this card switches sides. Um, so this is really nice with stuff like Venom, of course. Because you can you can get Venom's you can get Venom's ability before she switches over the side. She's quite niche, but she's good in a clog deck as well, guys. If you look at if you think about a clog deck, something like Professor X, the two goblins, Green Goblin, Hobgoblin, Doctor Octo, Spider, Debris, Viper, you can clog their entire lane. You can either use her to clog their their side and put it to four, or you can clog the lane and you can play in your own side for five power. So Cool in that kind of deck, but it's very niche, very specific deck. I don't even know how strong that deck is. I haven't tried it myself yet, but it, it's in, on paper, it looks pretty good. Um, and also very good with Storm. Um, outside of that deck, you know, you can use Storm off initiative. If you if you're if they've got initiative, your opponent's got initiative, and you play Storm, and then Titania is the last card next round. You've got five power and a free drop on top. You know, you might be able to secure a flood location. So not as good as She Hulk, but still has their uses. Um, definitely have to play around with it, but the clock deck is very interesting. So I definitely recommend trying that out. Uh, it could be very fun and uh, very hard to predict for the opponent. Uh, next card is Luke Cage. Luke Cage is two energy, one power. Ongoing, your cards can't have their power reduced. Um, very interesting card. I think wh what I like about this card, peeps, what I really like about it is that it, it, it enables... Um, a card and deck type that we already know of that can't be used, which is Hazmat. Hazmat reduces all of other cards' power by one, and um, so you can so you can use you can use this to make it so only the opponent's cards are reduced. I mean, if, obviously, if you use this with Wong and Odin, you could be seeing minus four, minus you know minus six. It's it's pretty insane um, with Hazmat. And uh, a Wong Odin list. It'll make it very hard for the opponents. I think that's where you're going to get the most use of this. You can also use it with like Typhoid Mary. It's pretty cool. Um, and that's that's really it. I mean, it's, it, it doesn't count as Scorpion. We're talking about Scorpion, but obviously that's in the hand. But definitely the Hazmat, Hazmat deck with Luke Cage definitely looks very, very appealing, guys. Well, I, would, I would definitely be looking at that. I think that's the strongest thing you can do with Luke Cage. Absorbing Man, again, very, very strong. Four energy, three power. On reveal, if the last card you played has an on reveal ability, this court card copies it. Now, I'm going to be very honest with you. I have, I've asked around. I can't get confirmation on this without seeing it. But the way that is written, I'm not sure if 
it takes the ability and gives it to Absorbing Man, or Absorbing Man turns into the actual card itself, right? I don't know, because the word in it can be a bit, bit um, awkward in the game sometimes, so I'm not entirely sure. But either way, in both of those instances, again, Hazmat deck is very, very good in the Hazmat deck, um, with four Odin. It's also pretty insane with Jubilee. Um, it's quite flexible, it's quite useful in many decks. Discard filler, it's insane because you think about it. It can substitute for any discard and also it's very good with Ghost Rider. Okay, with Ghost Rider, big discard, you can get two massive units units out. That's pretty pretty incredible. So definitely, definitely good in the hazmat list and also fantastic in the discard list. So uh, this is a very good card to pack, guys. I think this is definitely a top five as well. Um, just because it's versatility, it can fit in so many decks and be very, very useful. Maria Hill, two energy, three power. On reveal, add a random one cost card to your hand. Um, interesting card. I mean, it's not exactly the best card in the world. It's a bit of a filler. It fills for Zoo. It's not bad in Zoo. Because obviously, you get a guaranteed one cost, which obviously gets buffed by Kazar and uh, Blue Marvel. But it also lends truth to a new archetype we're seeing, which is Cerebro 3. Um, which is obviously just pretty much every free power card in the game. You've got some interesting ones, especially with some of the one later cards coming in Series 5 that we're going to check out up later on in the video. But Cerebro 3 is, very, you know, Professor X, stuff like that. It's all the free power cards. She fits in very, very well into that. So, very niche, not the best card in the world, but Cerebro 3 is a very, very strong looking deck. It is quite hard to um, obtain all the cards for that list, but definitely look out for that one. Um, Cerebro 3 is going to be, going to be, um, I think, rampant. Um, rampant. On Marvel Snap when this uh, patch gets released, especially when people start getting hold of these cards. Um, so yeah, just a bit of a filler card, not the best in the world, but definitely has its uses in a couple of decks. Next card is free energy, four power, Agent Coulson. Okay, on reveal, add a random four cost and five cost card to your hand. I like this card a lot, peeps, and the reason why because it forces curve. Um, sometimes in the game, you kind of have a situation. It's why Sunspot is so popular because sometimes you're not able to spend all your your energy, but with this card. Uh, obviously, you get guaranteed four and five. It's a bit of RNG on, on how useful and how powerful those cards are going to be, but it's fantastic to have those two cards. Also, because it does give you two cards, um, it's also very, very good in collector deck. Okay, with Quinjet, Quinjet Dino Collector. This fits straight in. Fantastic, two cards in, two cost reduction. Dino gets pumped up, Collector gets pumped up. So fantastic card to put into Dino um, and Collector, and also just very good in many different control decks because of that guaranteed curve fill so pretty decent card again a little bit niche but definitely useful not bad in the slightest okay next card here we have heli carrier six energy ten power when you discard this from your hand replace it with three random cards very interesting card guys first of all i want to say very interesting concept obviously fantastic in collector um three cards coming in that's three stats for collector um insane with quinjet three cards coming in free reduction one energy off each the card very efficient um, and obviously Lady Sif, it works very well because obviously most discard um, cards are random. But because this is a six cost, you can put in Lady Sif and you can put Dino in with Lady Sif as well. Because obviously then it's safe from the discard. And Lady Sif obviously discards your highest card in your hand. It's just good at six as well. Like if you have a bad turn, 10, 10 power at six is, you know, respectable on its own. Also very good in Heller, of course. Uh, if, you're, if you're playing lots of uh, discard stuff like Hell Cow then this can fit straight in and you can get even more bigger discards. So very, very good um, in those cards. I think very good in this card, very good in that dino list was Lady Sif. So definitely would check that out. Um, the one that I like is the Quinjet Dino Collector. I think that's very synergistic, very nice. Um, so moving on, Embarku. Uh, one energy, two power. If this is in your deck at the end of the game, it leaps to random location. I did think this was quite bad at first. I thought this, I'll be honest with you guys, I thought this card was quite bad. Um, it's quite bad in most decks, but there is a couple niche uses with this deck. Um, Cerebro 2, you can use it in Cerebro 2 um, with Lockjaw. And with Lockjaw is the main is the is the main is the main use of this, okay? Because obviously you in, in Marvel Snap, you draw most of your deck, like 75% of your deck, pretty much every game on average. That you're not your normal curve out, obviously, about you know certain card effects, but you're not you you are most likely gonna draw most of your deck. So Lockjaw is very fantastic because you can use it. First of all, it's efficient. One cost you want for Lockjaw because obviously that's how you get most of your efficiency. You spend one, you get a massive card out. Um, and, and it puts it back into its deck, so it's a double whammy. So not the best card in the world. Very, very niche. Only usable really in that deck, but it is good in that deck. So if you get that, I would definitely be looking at Lockjaw with Embarku peeps. Okay. And then moving on. Atuma. 
4 energy, 10 power. If you have another card here at the end of your turn, destroy this. Pretty cool card. 10 power for 4. I mean, you don't see that very often, okay? 10 power for 4 is, is, is pretty pretty impressive. Um, the, main, the main places you're going to see this is destroy a deck. Okay, destroy a deck with armor. You put it on armor. Basically, you want armor, and most the most likely deck is destroyer. Slot straight into destroyer with armor. Um, obviously, good with Professor X. And um, and zero. I mean, with Professor X, it's it's a little bit. It's a little bit like you you have to play a tumor first. It's not not really telegraphs, but you play a tumor and you play Professor X on top of it, right? And you get thirteen power there. Um, which is pretty nice. You have to do it on obviously a, a naked zone, uh, and then obviously zero. You know, a bit more of a niche use. Zero removes the power. Big zero, just playing zero, a bunch of cards that you know benefit from zero. It could be quite niche use as well. But I think most of the time we're going to see this in destroy. It's a great upgrade for destroyer. You know, take out like warpath or something like that. You know, whatever, whatever's there. It's pretty. It's pretty much an upgrade on nearly every card in destroyer. So fantastic. A little bit niche again, guys. But destroyer is such a popular card, popular archetype. So it is pretty nice if you do have that that list set up. All right. Next card. Now, I believe, I believe people, I looked at this a bit bit more. I, at first glance, I thought this card was amazing, but now that I look at it, this card here, Orca, now that I look at it a bit more and, and, and looked at the decks and stuff, 6 energy, 9 power, ongoing, plus 5 if this is your only card here. This is probably the worst card in the entire set, and you should be upset if you pack this. I'm sorry to say that's just me being honest. Um, but the problem with this card is very simple. It's just like a weaker Giganto, okay? At least Giganto gets to see play in like a Lockjaw and... Um, Lock jaws, stuff like Hella and Discard. The problem is if this if this lock jaws, it doesn't get its ongoing, so it's just nine power. Same with like Hella and anything that's uncontrollable where it places. It's basically a bad Giganto. It doesn't really compete very well. You don't really want to be playing on its own anyway. Um, so I would love to know if, if someone in the comments, if you can figure a way to actually use this effectively, I'd love to I'd love to see that. But from what I've done, my calculations, I think this is the worst card and pretty much doesn't see play. Um, it just you know, destroy is better. It's, it's just not enough. Like nine, nine base with with fourteen power, and it's a conditional fourteen power at six. There's too many other things in the game now, especially with some of these introduction of the introduction of some of these cards that are coming in this series four and five. I don't finish these plays. I think it's very bad. Um, you know, obviously if you've got a, a weak collection and you know you get this like one of your first early pull three cards, like if you get it early and pull three, then yeah, maybe it will see play then. But in any respectable collection, once you get like one thousand CR, you should be having cards that are better than this. So a bit of a disappointment, disappointing card. It's basically a Namor, a bit more scaled up Namor. But the problem is Namor has less less competition. Orca has a lot more competition at six. You know some of the plays we're seeing here with She Hulk, etc. Um, so yeah, I think quite a bad card. Now Galactus people, series five now. Galactus, 6 energy, 3 power, on reveal if this is your only card to destroy all other locations. Those who are familiar with this card, because it's been in the game through random random effects, stuff like the hub and stuff that changes your deck, the location that changes your deck, Agent 13. So we, we've seen it, but we've only ever seen it, I always thought it was weak, because we've only ever seen it in its base form of like free, free attack, okay? Um, but now, free power, sorry. Now, now that you can actually play this thing and build around it, I'm thinking stuff like wave, okay? Wave into death is insane with this peeps. You can do a wave. You can do a wave at three, and then play this at four, and then you know you're five and six. You, you can, if you got Shuri as well, I know this is crazy. Shuri's coming up. It's two series five cards. Very unrealistic, but this is the kind of you know thing that you you if if, if you're like if you hire out of your mind and get all the cards or most of the cards. Sh think about this play, okay? Wave into Galactus on four, then Shuri on five into a death on six that's 29 power um because obviously the death uh shuri makes dub shuri's true doubles the power of cards and death has 12 base so you can do some crazy things with galactus you can also do um electro into galler at five into leader at six that's like nearly unbeatable on, on a naked spot if they have nothing there there's only a few things that can beat that stuff like you know destroy gets a tie um a tumor hilariously enough wins that um but yeah, there's a few other other ways as well. But most most of the time, if you do that, Galactus into leader from Electro, that's a that's a pretty much a win on on a, on a naked side. Obviously, you can kind of bait that by playing on the other side. So Galactus is interesting and a few different combos there. Um, but yeah, you want to build around and Wolverine is very nice in there as well. If you can get a buffed up Wolverine, then when he destroys the other side, so it's on cheaper sides. Obviously, giving you Shuri, but that's a bit expensive. But Wolverine, um, Wolverine's amazing because obviously it destroys and it helps death as well. They destroy the other sides. And Wolverine will eventually jump onto the Galactus side. You can also get two death procs if it jumps into a side earlier. It actually happened to me on a game uh, yesterday through random luck because I got random 
random deck from the location, replace your cards with random, sorry, replace your deck with random cards. And um, I got Galactus and Wolverine actually made that play, Wolverine with five power, that was that was pretty fun, good game. Um, so yeah, so interesting, you can build around it, I think it's pretty good. And um, yeah, get, get, um, get used to playing at least four power on every location because, you know, although it's very, very rare, you're going to see more of this and it's going to become, you know, start to become a serious threat. All right, moving on, Valkyrie. Five energy, three power. On reveal, set all cards at this location to three power. So again, this is like, when I was talking about Cerebro 3 earlier, um, with M Maria, Maria Hill, this is like the most enabling thing about this, this comp. Cerebro 3 with this card, you're like guaranteed to win the location you play this on um, with Cerebro 3, because obviously if if you have Cerebro 3, everything goes down to 3, but you get 5, so you're always going to beat them, especially if it's equal. Very good in Zoo. Because if you've got Zoo and you play this location and you've got 4 versus 4, you're always going to... Well, not 4 versus 4, but if you've got more more um, characters on that location, which you should do on Zoo, then you win that automatically just by having more more cards there. So very, very strong card. Uh, very good at, against strong um, single targets as well. Stuff like Infernal and Destroyer, you just like completely nullify them and bring them down like, you know, 90% of their power. So very, very strong card. I can see it just being used generally against strong stuff and definitely in the Zoo and Cerebro 3 um, archetype. I think probably a top five as well uh, for me. Some of these Series 5 uh, cards are very, very strong people. Very, very strong gamers. Um, I mean, just moving on to Super Scroll here. Look at this thing. Four, four energy, two power. Ongoing has the ongoing effects of all enemy cards. Like, this is completely bonkers. It's kind of like a tech card. It's like it's like a Shang-Chi. It's like a Shang-Chi Enchantress, but like just a bit more stronger. Like that Series 5 edition. I mean, it destroys Iron Man, destroys one comps, destroys Dino comps. Absolutely absurd um, against Spectrum and Destroyer. Because Spectrum and Destroyer run like 10 ongoing cards. You take all of their abilities. I mean, this is this introduction of this card. I don't know how rare these things are going to be. Obviously, they say it's very, very low chance to get these cards. But within the thousands and thousands of people that play Marvel Snap, you're going to see people with this. Probably a couple games a day at least. And especially with the collector's token system. So this is going to be a problem. This is going to meta define, I think. This is probably a top three. Might even be the strongest in the entire entire series. Most most uh, game influential. Because the thing with this card is that you literally... Like, this just completely destroys Spectrum and Destroyer. So it's a very good counter to those cards. Um, obviously, it's very, very rare. So we'll have to see how impactful that's going to be. But it's definitely a hard counter to those to those decks. So, I mean, you don't. I don't even have a deck for this. I don't really have a deck... Um, deck for this because I think it's just a tech card it fits in pretty much any any deck or when an ongoing meta is popular okay so moving on to Shuri I mentioned earlier four energy two power on reveal double the power of the next card you play I mean it's just it's absurd it's actually it's like a mobile Shuri's lab very very good with Black Panther of course and Zola you know you play Shuri five Black Panther Pla sorry Shuri four Black Panther five so it goes from it goes from four to eight to sixteen then you play Zola and you get 32 32 it's like having Shuri's Shuri's um Shuri's, uh, Shuri's lab. I mean, obviously you can do it with um. You could do some. You could do some crazy cheese peeps as well. There's a, che there's a cheese line where it's like Shuri. Um, Shuri, and then you play Odin. You play. You play Wong onto Shuri, okay. Wong onto Shuri. Then you play Odin. You play Yellow Jacket in another another lane, and it's just like absurd, right? Um. Because obviously you're getting that zero cost for the Shuri as well. So a little, little niche line where you have 32 and 32 on each power. But I wouldn't play that. I think the Odin's yellow jacket is a bit of a meme more than anything else. I think if you've got Shuri, like you pack Shuri early, you play Black Panther Zola. I mean, that is that is just insane. Like we saw on Shuri's lap, Shuri's lap how insane that is. And most people aren't going to have this card. So if you pack this early and you play Black Panther Zola with it, you'll catch so many people off guard. And uh, that's what's going to be crazy about these Series 5 cards. No one's going to expect it because they're so low chance. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty good, pretty good stuff right there. Bast, one energy, one power on reveal. Set the power of all cards in your hand to free. It's just Cerebro free again. What it does, what it allows you to do is Cerebro free. I mean, a lot of these are, a lot of these cards are actually just like really good in Cerebro is free, because what that allows you to do, it allows you to play spawners like Mister Sinister and Brood. Uh, you can play those, and that that obviously fits straight into Cerebro free. You can play onslaught, so you can onslaught on top of Cerebro and Mystique, so you can get four iterations of the cerebral proc so what it allows you to do is just basically play it allows you to play swarmers like in zoo as well but like mainly it's the cerebro free 
Um, Cerebro 3 archetype again, but it allows you to play bigger cards, um, for NBA cards, stuff like Onslaught, so. Pretty nuts. Pretty nuts indeed. I mean, I, I mean, it's not exactly the best thing with Onslaught, because obviously Onslaught has 7 power. But, um, you can put it in for the, uh, Cerebro 3, and then it gets buffed up by the other one. So it actually gets more power in the end of the day, but it's still a bit weird. But definitely the spawn is, it's insane on them, so. I think it's just really a Cerebro 3 card. And the final card is Thanos, guys. Um, Thanos is very interesting. Obviously... The stones, um, well, what finals first of all is 6 energy, 8 power. At the start of the game, shuffle the 6 affinity stones in your deck. The 6 affinity stones are draw 2 stones from your deck. They're all 1 cost, by the way. 1-1, one, one, mind stone. Uh, power stone, if you've played all 6 stones, Thanos has plus 10 power every is ongoing. 3, three, en uh, three power. Reality stone, 1-1, one, one. transform this location into a new one. Draw a card, so it's like Scarlet Witch effect. Soul Stone, draw a card. Ongoing enemy cards here have one power, minus one power. One, one. Space Stone, next time, next turn you can move one card at its location, draw a card. One, one. And then one, one, Time Stone, gain plus one energy, next turn, draw a card. It's pretty insane. Um, it's pretty insane. It's, it's, it's obviously very, very, um, like you just build around Thanos. Like it's, it's kind of like probably the most influential card in the game because it just changes the way you play the game with this deck, right? Very, very good, strong effects on the stones. Like the stones, like drawing, drawing as many as you are, transforming locations, movement, minus one power. These are all like very, very strong effects in their own right. Um, very good with zoo because obviously they're one cost stones, so you can fit them into zoo. But I think where we're really going to see this is beast. Uh, beast obviously picks up all the cards in one location, and makes them zero again, so you can play the stones two times over. So definitely, Thanos with beast, we're going to see a lot. Um, but yeah, that's really it for the video, peeps. Sorry I've been away for a couple of days. I had a couple of personal things to sort out. But I've, it's all it's all fixed now, so I'll get back to the uh, uploads. And um, yeah, good luck on your pulls for Series 4 and 5 um, when it comes out. Hopefully you've all saved up your credits. And please let me know in the comments if you thought about any synergies that I forgot to mention that you think are really strong. I spent quite a bit of time in this video looking for everything, looking at the decks and looking what could really work. And I, I believe these are probably the strongest synergies. There might be a few things missing because, you know, we're all human. Let me know in the comments if there is anything that you figured out. I'd love to know myself as well in case I do pack it. And uh, I'm sure uh, the viewers as well, um, your fellow viewers would be much appreciative as well sharing any noise that you've known. But yeah, I'd be very, very... Very impressed if anyone can find anything else that's very, you know, strong with these uh, with these cards. But other than that, I'm going to head off. And um, if you like the video, as always, drop it a like. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're interested in Marvel Snap co content, please do subscribe. And uh, I'll drop the socials in the description if you want to catch me live on the stream. If you want to have a live conversation there, always fantastic. Um, more and more people come from YouTube to the Twitch and it's always, always great to see. So, again, take care. All the best. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.